Having a starting soon screen for your live stream is important. It gives your viewers a chance to show up before you hop into anything or make any significant announcements. But it also gives your viewers an idea of what sort of aesthetic and production value to expect from your live stream. So this week, I have two starting soon screens for you with vastly different aesthetics, and they can be very easily customized with your logo and your colors in Blender 3D. They also match up with the overlays I released last week. Link to that video in the description. And not to pat myself on the back or anything, but I kind of think I've outdone myself. One of them is a cool high-tech sci-fi look with glowing lights, and the other one is more of a low-key, clean design that you can put your own footage or images behind. All you have to do is download the file from the Discord, link in the description, and follow along. Now, before we get started, if you like the free graphics, please do consider hitting that like and subscribe button. It's completely free, it lets you know when there's new content, and it really helps me out. All of that being said, let's get started. My name is Chris Folia. I'm your stream professor. Welcome to Stream School. All right, when you first hop into the first Blender file, that's right, there are two this week. The very first thing you're gonna wanna do is come up to the shiny circle button right here and click it. That'll put you in a rendered preview mode so you can constantly see what your starting soon screen looks like as you're working on it. And I don't have access to a low or mid-end computer, so hopefully this one doesn't lag too badly for you all. But anyway, if you want to see this in motion, you can just hit space on your keyboard and it'll play back. And notice how when it gets to the end, it loops perfectly seamlessly. You can hit space again to stop it. Then if you just want to scrub through to find a good frame to work on, you can grab the blue playhead right here and just drag it on down. I'm going to stop on around frame 1000. Then the first thing you're going to want to do is change your logo here to your logo. So for that, if you come over to where it says your logo on the right here, click the square next to it, then go down to the materials panel, where it says fish logo, there is an X button. You're gonna wanna click the X, then click open, go to the up, go to, go to find wherever your logo is on your computer. I'm personally gonna use my fish logo right here. Double click it to bring it in, and notice how it loads in and everything still plays and loops perfectly seamlessly. Now, I realize some of you don't have access to a logo or don't have a logo yet for your stream, so if you want to, you can come up to the scene collection up top here, go down to where it says logo, and click the checkbox next to it to hide that and everything will still play, it'll still loop perfectly seamlessly. You don't have to have a logo to use this scene, or if you just don't wanna put your logo in this scene, that's fine too. I'm personally gonna leave mine on. And the next thing you can customize is the glow that sort of sweeps through the scene. And you can make that whatever color you want by clicking glow color right here, going to the materials panel, clicking the color box, and you can just drag this around until you get a color that you like. I'm gonna make mine blue, but a little bit less cyan than it was. So somewhere around there looks pretty good to me. Then finally, in terms of color controls, we have the railing color, which modifies these corner pieces right here. So we click that, and you'll notice if I brighten this up, you get a much better look at how you can customize that. I'm personally gonna leave mine like a dark blue purple and leave it dark so it doesn't draw too much attention to itself. Something like that isn't horrible. And there's a couple more things we can customize and those would be the lights. So if I scroll out with my mouse wheel and pan over by holding shift and mouse wheel, scroll in, just get this nice and lined up so I can see these. You'll notice we have like a sun shaped thing right here and another light right here. So I click this one, this is our key light or our sunlight. If we go over to the light properties, we can change the color of that. So if I want that to be more blue to cool down the scene, I can do that. Or if I want that to be more warm, I can do that. Or I could even make it bright green for sort of like a techie look. I'm personally gonna leave mine a little bit colder like that to match the monotone color nature of my logo. But you do whatever works best for you. Then we also have this massive rectangle right here and that is the fill light to sort of fill in the shadows just a teensy bit. So if I click that, I'm personally gonna make mine like a magenta or a purple to sort of fill in the shadows with a nice purple. And if if I hide this, you'll notice that it's, it's pretty subtle what effect it adds, but it's nice. It adds sort of like a gradient of extra color to the scene. And those are all of the customization options for this 
particular starting soon screen. The next step would be to export it. So if you go to the printer icon right here, all you have to change is the output directory. I already set up all of the proper codec and container options for you all. So just click the folder and find a place on your hard drive to shove this. I'm personally gonna put mine under stream school and I'll call this sci-fi. Yeah. <laughs> hit enter twice or hit accept, and then go up to render and hit render animation. And this is going to take a while, especially if, if you have a lower end computer. So I'd recommend getting up, going for a walk, getting a snack, watching some Netflix, do whatever while this runs in the background. And then as soon as this is done, you have a nice WebM file you can use. But I'm gonna cancel out personally because we have a second Blender file to hop into. So, hopping into the second Blender file when you first open it, it should look pretty similar to this. And the very first thing you're gonna wanna do here as well is click the shiny circle button to get a nice rendered preview. You can hit space to play through it, see what it looks like where the text sort of fades into oblivion and then comes up, has your logo option as well. And then let's pause on a good frame to customize. I'm gonna go for like around 145. And we have a lot more options here than we had on the previous starting soon screen, so let's hop into it. First, you can click this square right here to modify your logo here to your logo. Go down to the materials panel, then where it says fish logo, click the X, you know the drill by this point. Hit open, I'm gonna look for my logo, which is the Stream School logo this time. And you can also turn that off if you just don't want the logo altogether, you can turn that collection off as well. But you'll notice this doesn't match up with the text super well, and I added controls to fix that too. So if we pan over here holding shift plus middle mouse button, and then zoom in, we can click on this circle right here, and that is representative of our logo position. So if we grab the movement widget, we can drag the logo around to match it up a bit better. And then if we grab the scale widget, we can also scale it up to match a little bit better. And you can alter back and forth between the two, or you can use the hotkeys to move stuff around much faster, which is G for move and S for scale. Then we can grab the arrows right here to recenter the whole thing or scale the whole thing until we get it how we like it. And again, you can use the movement widgets or the hotkeys. I'm personally using the hotkeys to go a little bit faster. So I'm gonna move mine somewhere about right here. Moving on to the next options, we have the gradient colors. So gradient color one is this blue in the upper right hand corner. So I'm gonna change that to be like a dark purple to match my logo. Then gradient color two, I'm gonna make more of like a hot pink. Again, to match the general aesthetic of the Stream School channel. If you play through, all of this still works perfectly fine. Everything fade, everything cycles through, it loops, everything plays perfectly fine. And by the way, you're not limited to having this in the center like this. You can grab the big control, the arrows, and you can scale that, you can move it to the corner, you can move it up here, you can move it all around, do whatever you want with it to customize it for your stream. You could even make it bigger if you really want to, but that's not really readable at that point. Then we have the border color, which is this outer border right here, and you can change that to whatever you want. The white personally matches my stream or my logo pretty well, so I'm gonna leave it at that. But then you can also come down here to border width, and that's not gonna be a material parameter, that's gonna be a property. So if you so if you come up here, so I have you might have it hidden, you might have it showing. There's this side panel right here. You can hit in on your keyboard to show or hide that. If you come up to item and go down to properties, you'll notice there's a border width property that I added. You can just click on that and drag it and you can change the width of the border surrounding the starting soon screen. I'm personally gonna leave mine at 1.18 or 0.15 I think was the default. Uh, and again, if you don't want the border, you can also get rid of that altogether. I personally like it, but if you come up here to the collections and you click the checkbox next to border, you can also just completely get rid of that. Then 
One more option you have is you notice how this fades into transparency to the checkered pattern. That means it's gonna render out with a layer of transparency on it. That is designed so you can put your own picture, like a picture of your setup or some, or maybe like a video of some gameplay behind this once you put it in OBS. And I'm gonna show that in just a minute. But if you don't want that, if you just want the solid animated gradient overlay without anything behind it, you can uncheck the transparent Notice has a question mark uh, collection, and that'll get rid of that and just make it totally solid and opaque. And finally, the last thing that you can customize here is the shadows. So if you select the light right here, hit R on your keyboard and move your mouse, you can change the direction of the shadows to be whatever you want, just like so. And that looks pretty cool. And then, to export this, all you have to do is go up to the printer icon. You'll notice that I went ahead and set up all of the proper codec and container options for you. You just have to click the folder, find a location for it. I'm going to put mine in the same location as the sci-fi one. Go here, and we'll call this one Cool Gradient Starting Soon. Hit enter twice, or hit the accept button, then go to render, and render animation. And again, this is gonna take a little bit, so go get a snack or watch Netflix or run around outside or something. Hopping over into OBS, you can come down to the plus button. You can hit add a media source, and I'm gonna call this uh, starting soon screen. Hit okay, browse for your file. Mine is going to be right here. Going to hit the loop checkbox and then hit OK. And that'll come in. It looks perfectly fine. And if you chose to have the transparency applied to this, you can also add in some background footage. So if I hit Add, then Media Source, we're going to call this um, Pro MLG Animal Crossing. Hit OK. I'm going to check the loop checkbox. And ideally, you want something long enough for your starting soon screen before you start the stream or something that loops. But I'm gonna hit browse, I'm going to go to footage and find my gameplay, hit okay, and drag that beneath the starting soon screen. And we have something that looks kinda cool. We've got some gameplay back here, we've got the starting soon with the logo, and it loops perfectly seamlessly. Hopefully, at this point, you have a cool new starting soon screen to use on your live stream. And if you found this video useful, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button below the video for new content every single week. Also, if you have any questions or just want to come hang out and be a part of our incredible community, I'm live every Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday at twitch.tv slash oraclefishlive. Let me know in the comments which starting soon screen you're going to use, and let me know what kinds of things you want to see next. Until next time, my name is Chris Folia, I'm your stream professor, and class is out.